All right. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Kevin uh, from BIM3 International. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Much appreciated. So uh, today we'll be uh, we'll be talking about Acumetica Manufacturing, BIM, SAD Maintenance Management Software, and QDMS Quality uh, Risk and Compliance Management Software. We have a great panel of speakers today. Uh, we have uh, John Schremer with us from GIA Systems, uh, Chief Operating Officer of uh, GIA Systems. He's with us uh, with his great uh, insights and uh, uh, in-depth of uh, knowledge. Uh, we also have Itiar Gonzalez, uh, Producer Software Engineer of uh, Beamster International, and uh, myself, Kevin Devejoglu, I'm the Beamster, uh, I'm the Managing Director of Beamster uh, International. So what I like to do is, uh, I like to start I like to start with a very brief uh, company uh, overview. I have like five uh, or six slides, and then I'm gonna uh, let uh, John uh, continue with um, uh, Acumetica Manufacturing, and then we'll continue with each year, uh, Gonzalez. So uh, uh, I'm uh, with uh, Beamster International, and Beamster International is an enterprise software maker since uh, 1998. So as a company, uh, we are a digital transformation enabler, and we help. Uh, companies and organizations uh, simplify their processes. That's how we design our uh, products and that's our basically uh, vision. Um, uh, we are a group of companies, our software development center and our parent company is based in Istanbul metro area. Uh, uh, we also have another organization in Europe, in the Netherlands called BIMSER Europe for our European uh, operations. Uh, so as a group, we are about 150 people and we are growing every single year. Also European Bank of uh, Development and Reconstructuring, EBRD is also in our board. So we have uh, international uh, vision and uh, support in, uh, from uh, many sites. Um, uh, BIMSER is a certified SAP vendor, uh, a Microsoft Gold Partner and Acumetica Independent Software Vendor that we'll talk more about today. Uh, and um, uh, let me give you a brief information about our product line, our product range. We are very focused since 1998. We just focus on these four products and we have been developing these, we own the technology. Basically, EBA is uh, our workflow, document management, uh, records management, and OCR platform. Uh, Beam is our asset maintenance, facility management, and energy management software that's uh, also uh, integrated with Acumetica. Uh, we have QDMS, that's quality, risk and compliance management software, which is also integrated with Acumetica. And finally, we have Ensemble, uh, that's the business process uh, management software. So uh, let me give you uh, brief information about how we position our product. Ensemble is a managerial software. Uh, basically, uh, it has uh, balanced scorecard capabilities and performance management capabilities. Uh, EBA with the workflow and records management, Beam with asset and maintenance management, QDMS with the quality management, uh, automate processes simply. So all of our products, they can work standalone, they can be integrated with each other, and they can be integrated with any uh, software, any ERP, any CRM. We have app servers, uh, API. Uh, we have uh, mobile apps available, and our systems work on cloud as well as on-premise uh, environment, uh, simply. Uh, we have been uh, deploying many different projects. Uh, when we look at this uh, slide, you can see how many projects we have deployed in by the end of last year. Uh, these are global figures. Here you can also get the idea of how many clients we have globally as well. And um, uh, as you see, uh, we have uh, deployed IBA more than 520 times, BIBA, BIM more than 340 times, QDMS more than 920 times, and Ensemble uh, more than 180 times, and still counting. Um, we are a channel-only company. We only sell through our uh, uh, solution partners, same in the United States and same in any uh, part of the world, basically. So uh, I just uh, want to share this information uh, uh, with you. Uh, and uh, finally, let me give you a brief information about some of our references. Uh, we work with many different companies. Uh, historically, Binter is coming from enterprise market. Uh, therefore, we have uh, naturally enterprise level uh, references. 3M is one of our references using EBA in 17 different countries. United Nations is using EBA for refugee tracking. Uh, they are using our document management and records management uh, system. Uh, Bridgestone is one of our references in manufacturing and tire industry. 
AstraZeneca is also using EBA in pharma industry. We have Ford and Lennon Nissan Alliance uh, using uh, EBA, and we have Arctic Movie Theaters uh, managing their uh, purchasing operations with our software products. Arctic Movie Theaters is based in California. They have about a thousand employees. So uh, since we have a partner with Acumetica, uh, we have uh, we are very focused on mid market. And that's uh, how we also position our products as well. Same with EBA, Beam, and QDMS. Uh, and we are very excited uh, to partner with Acumetica, Acumetica Solution Partners and Ecosystem. So in a nutshell, that's who we are and what we do at Beam3 International. Uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to uh, turn it to uh, John Schlemmer from JAW Systems, if that's OK. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, continue uh, from there. Uh, John, uh, would you like to take it uh, from here? Sure, I can go ahead and do that, Kevin. Thanks very much. My name is John Schlemmer. As, as Kevin said, I'm the CEO of Just Systems, and I'm going to kind of cover a little bit about the uh, Acumatic Manufacturing Edition. Uh, so I need somebody to help me turn the slides here. Thank you. Um, so for those of you who may or may not know, uh, you know, our product was totally built in on the Acumatica XRP platform. Uh, so the way that Acumatica builds their products, it's 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 built right off the XRP platform, uh, the .NET and uh, uh, the HTML5 and uh, C Sharp, and we actually OEM the product to Acumatica uh, a little over a year ago, and and continue to work very closely with them. Uh, on the manufacturing edition, so it is one of their additions. Uh, obviously, at the top, they're the the ones that most people know are the field services edition, the commerce edition, uh, the construction edition, relatively new. But the manufacturing edition uh, has been out for about a year and a half, and uh, just finished up uh, probably the best year uh, that we've had in in the history of of the the product itself. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, a couple things uh, that I'm going to just mention is just to cover some of the functionality within the product. So when you buy the Acumatica manufacturing suite or the addition, it comes with three core manufacturing modules. So it's a bill of material, which is realistically the engineering bill. Uh, some of the features that are, that are available in this, it is a multi-level bill. It goes to 25 levels. Uh, that have been tested. Uh, I'm sure it can go to more because it's a two-digit field, but uh, I've never seen anybody that had any any more than 18. Um, it's an integrated bill of material and routing. Uh, it, it handles both fixed and variable overhead, handles outside processes. Uh, you can have uh, steps and, and, and production steps. You can attach documents. Um, you know, we're excited a, a lot with uh, when I get to the production side with our partnership with uh, with Bemser because uh, it does add a lot of uh, enhanced capabilities from the quality standpoint, which you're going to see today. The production management side is where the actual costing is going to occur. Uh, so this is where you can either track labor, you can back flush labor through uh, a move transaction material tracking, there's lots of serial cradle to grave. Uh, this is where you can also have barcode integration as well. Uh, and it's, it's all of this is full multi-site. The MRP module, it's a full regen module. Uh, it includes the mass production schedules, it includes sales forecasting. Uh, it also has transfer recommendations. And so it's really a one screen to where you can actually see everything from an MRP standpoint, take action on those and go ahead and create manufacturing requirements, or you can actually create purchasing requirements as well. Okay, next screen, please. So there's optional modules associated with this as well. So these are these are three of these. Uh, the product configurator is a full featured uh, features and options. It also includes dimensional capabilities with formulas that you can calculate. It is rules based. Uh, it integrates with both the opportunity side 
as well as the sales order side. So you can invoke a configured item uh, out of either one of those particular screens. Uh, go ahead and make your selections. And when you're done with that, it will actually create a configured item. When you create the production order directly from that, it's only going to create the items that are configured. Uh, it is also available on the portal. We've, there's a couple people that are actually utilizing this uh, primarily with, with dealers, um, but it is, a, it is a separate website and attaches to the Acumatic customer portal. The estimating module is a little bit different than uh, Acumatica quotes. So within the Acumatica quotes, the inventory item needs to be, the ID actually needs to exist. Uh, with the estimating module, you don't need to have an inventory item. Uh, so we utilize a concept called non-inventory items. You can copy estimates in from bills of material, from other estimates, from other production orders. Uh, it also integrates with opportunities and with sales orders. So you can actually create an estimate from a sales standpoint. You can say, I need to create an estimate. An engineer or a sales engineer may have to go out and actually create that estimate. But from a sales standpoint, I do have the capability to view and, and hyperlink into that from the opportunity screen. Uh, we've also added this to uh, the project side as well. Uh, which I'm going to touch on on the next screen, but uh, you know, currently right now, those those are the three things that it integrates into. You can also do revisions. Uh, you can do multiple different markups on different different cost buckets like labor and material, uh, and and then you can also create production orders directly from an estimate without having to create uh, a bill of material in the bill of material module. The advanced planning and scheduling module is a relatively new module. It was officially released in 2018 R2. Uh, it has the capability to do finite capacity scheduling. Uh, it gives you work center schedules, has work center capacity and utilization within it. Uh, with this uh, module, uh, Acumatic and, and has created hard allocations throughout the system. Uh, so when you add the manufacturing uh, suite or the modules, uh, you get a lot more allocations on the inventory allocation screen. Uh, we're also, you guys get to see this first, we're also adding some things that we're going to release at the summit, uh, which is going to be taking the work center schedule down further into a machine schedule, uh, along with adding tool scheduling and capable of promise. Next screen, please. Uh, we're also introducing an engineering change control module at the summit. Uh, so what this is going to allow you to do is go out and make an engineering change request. Uh, it's gonna have an approval process. Once it gets approved, then it's going to create an engineering change order. You go out and you can, you can make those changes. Uh, once everything gets approved on that, then we'll notify with an engineering change notice, update the revision. Uh, so it's, it's going to be much more robust than, than uh, current uh, where you can actually have revisions, uh, but they're, they're primarily a little bit manual. This is gonna be a little bit more automated and a little bit more process driven. Um, so, so we're really excited about this particular one. And then in 2018 R2, we also added uh, project manufacturing. This is not a separate module. This is an enhancement, but it does require the project accounting module. So one of the things that you can do is you can create a project, you can create a task, and then you can actually create uh, production orders directly from that task, link them back to that. Uh, you can actually go through then, and on the manufacturing side, there's a reference that ties that to it. You can actually create labor transactions, material transactions, uh, any move transactions as well, as, as just as normal within the manufacturing side. And all of those will then be populated in on the project screen on the cost budget side. Um, one of the things that was also added within this is a capability once you collect all of 
all of the uh, labor transactions, and this is not just related to the project manufacturing, but this is when it was done, you do have the capability to actually push those into the time activities, at which point in time you can create time cards, and then if you need to, you can output that to payroll. I mentioned the project manufacturing side is also integrated with estimating. Uh, so you can create estimates uh, of, of products that you've never done before, uh, attach them to the project as well to, for view. And then if, if it becomes an actual uh, order, if you will, or, or task, then you can actually create the inventory items directly from there. Next screen. So the last thing I want to touch on is, you know, with some of this new functionality, we've improved the product into certain markets. Uh, but these are actually the environments that we play best in. So obviously make the stock and make the order with the uh, advent of the project integration, as well as the engineering change control would become much, much stronger in the engineering to order market. Uh, configure to order with the product configurator. Uh, job shops, obviously, with estimating uh, in, in that piece. Project-centric companies, uh, obviously, with the advent of the project integration uh, and some of the estimating capabilities with there, and then repetitive. But then we also do batch processing. So it's not pure process, but if you have a finite batch, uh, you can actually go ahead and mix that batch and then have a different production order to do all the different packaging. Uh, we have probably 30 plus customers that are running in a batch process mode at this point in time. Uh, so it is something that if you run into something that people are doing a batch process, uh, we can handle that as well. So I'm gonna turn this back over to ICAR now and uh, allow her to show you uh, some of the things we're really excited about with the Bimser products. Thank you, John. So just like you, you mentioned, right, Akimarika is a, a great product that is now also working with Beam and QDMS. So what I'm going to do is just share a brief overview of what these two products do, um, show how they integrate with Akimarika, and then uh, complete the presentation with a little demo of each and one of the products. So to start with, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about Beam, our asset and maintenance management system. So basically the idea with Akimarika is that uh, we can expand the functionality with these two products. And so if, if you're using Akimarika or the manufacturing edition, you can also benefit from, from using Beam in terms of uh, the asset management, the material management, maintenance management, and, and many other modules that are available within mm -hmm. Beam. And the same thing happens with QDMS. So all of, our, all of our products are modular, which means that right now you see on the slides that you can uh, select the modules that are most interesting to you right now. And, um, and that way it makes it less complicated to the clients. Uh, you can only, uh, you can decide which modules you wanna use in the future. And for example, if, if we're talking about Beam, right? Uh, what we're gonna do is integrate with Akimarika in a way that it allows us to pick up the, the asset tree, to update assets both ways. So really this integration, what it's gonna allow us to do is avoid uh, duplicate entries for, for the data. So for example, if we want to obtain the material information, then we are directly transferring it from Akimarika. If we make changes on Beam, it, it also uh, is, uh, is sent back to Akimarika. So to show how these uh, integration works, I have a short video here. And this is also available on YouTube. And basically it, it starts by logging into Akimarika and showing uh, within the first phase of the integration what we were able to do. So um, I'm sure you, you are familiar with Akimarika right now. There is a fixed asset section where we can um, just create a new asset in here, for example, or, or modify a new one. So for example, if, if we just enter one more asset in here, okay, um, like um, just like a test uh, fixed asset, and we just fill out the, the mandatory fields, um, then we'll be able to see that all of this information is sent to Beam automatically. There is no need for us to enter more assets within our asset management module, no need to do anything. This is, this is gonna be directly transferred um, every, every few seconds. So 
what we what we do is use the um, the windows as a scheduler okay so you see here that once the asset has been created we have it on the list and the the windows task scheduler is going to be on the background making sure that the the integration file uh, is updated every few seconds so if i were to go to to beam right now we would see that that new asset that was uploaded is also now available on beam and you you see right now at the top so basically, that's that's one of the things we've done. Uh, we can we can now enter the, like a, a change in here. We can modify the description, for example, and see also this change in Acumatica. So basically, uh, this is allowing us to to work in both environments, but mostly take take care of the maintenance part of it within Beam and transfer all the all the changes to Acumatica. So just imagine the possibilities, right? You're going to be able to, to have different people logging in into, into Beam and taking care of all of those operations. And every time there is an operation about maintenance, there is typically going to be uh, material or inventory involved. And that's why you, you can also see that the inventory is also picked up from Acumatica and every changes that are uh, introduced here can also be seen on Beam. So for example, if I show you now the, the inventory uh, module in here, if we look for those items that were coming from, from Acumatica, um, we'll see that those two items are also available here. Okay. So that's, and that was part of like the first uh, phase of the integration between the two products. And I, I am also gonna be showing you a little bit more about about beam in in a moment uh, right now so basically beam um, I'm gonna switch screens right now so that you can see how it looks like um, you're gonna see that it is a product that has the 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 ability of taking care of all of our, our assets, our maintenance, our material operations. And then we can even introduce like purchasing management operations if we wanna use it for services management, for facility management, anything really that we wanna do here uh, with Beam is gonna be possible. So the first screen that we're gonna see is a dashboard that is customizable. The, this means that, for example, if you're interested in the uh, total cost of the maintenance, uh, we can see these numbers updated in real time here. We can have lists, we can have cards, we can have graphs, pie charts, anything we want. And we can actually design the widgets that we see here um, and they can change depending on the user that we log in with. And also depending on the authorizations, uh, we're gonna have access to different modules here on the main menu. So right now we have what we call the, the basic package, which, which are the first four modules that you see here, the asset maintenance material and personnel management modules. Then I have also activated the purchasing management module. And then finally we have the system settings. So for example, if we're talking about assets, I'm sure um, you, can, you can get an idea of how this is gonna work. We are gonna be able to list all of our assets. Um, and one of the uh, most interesting fun functionalities that we offer here within Beam is the graphical asset tree. This basically allows us to upload an image or a layout, a blueprint of our facility. Uh, we can be as specific as we want. We can zoom in and out. Uh, this is just a very simple example uh, where you can see that all of these dots represent assets. And if I hover over them, we see some, some information about them, right? So for example, here, um, at this corner, we have a truck. And we can see the status, we can see the group it belongs to, the asset type, the operation, everything. And if I were to click on it, I can also create a work request, I can create a work order, um, I can open the history of this asset, anything I want. So, you know, this is, this is just great from a managerial point of view, because you see everything that is going on um, in your facility right now. Um, at this very moment, all of the assets are green, right? So that means everything is okay. If they were to turn red, then there is an open work order. Or if they turn blue, then someone started to work on a preventive maintenance work order. And this way, we, uh, as a manager or as uh, a maintenance team member, we're going to be able to see um, what's going on at this very moment. And if we were to integrate um, uh, our system with, uh, with RFID, for example, we would be able to see how these items are moving around our facility, 
or for example, we could look for an asset in particular and see where it's located here on the screen. So also, you know, uh, now that we have all of our assets in place, um, we'll be able to, to take care of the maintenance operations. So we can create work requests, like for example, we can create new tickets, right? There is something something wrong and we create a ticket afterwards. That's what we, what we call um, corrective or reactive maintenance, right? Then we can also have different types of maintenance operations. If we want to create uh, preventive maintenance definitions so that we avoid any, any um, breakdowns in the future, we can also do that. And finally, we can also predict when there is going to be uh, a failure. So, for example, if we, are, we have within our assets, we have refrigerators, right? Or we, have, um, we are tracking the vibration of, of certain uh, pieces of equipment. So what we can do in the case of the refrigerator, whenever we uh, register that the temperature is um, either below or exceeding a certain limit, we can receive a, a notification and um, we can create an, a work request automatically. So basically, we're going to be able to to make sure that um, whatever happens, that we can that we can work on that and mixing these three different types of maintenance operations is really helping companies manage uh, their their facilities. And obviously, just like uh, you, I'm sure you can imagine, apart from creating these tickets, uh, creating these maintenance plans, everything, we can also create reports from, uh, from the information that's on the system. We have a report section for every single module. So for example, if we wanted to see just the asset maintenance history report, we would be able to, to see how many times an asset has been maintained um, in the past um, year, let's say. So, for example, from, from the beginning of the year 2018 until today, we could look for maybe all the assets that belong to a certain uh, cost center. So let's just choose New York for now. Click on prepare and, and we would be able to see just in a couple seconds how this report is generated. So we have uh, for this particular asset, it was maintained this one time. Um, the downtime was uh, this, and we have the total cost of the maintenance. For example, if I move to the next um, next page, we see here that this track was maintained many, many times, and that maybe when when we are thinking about getting more more equipment, uh, this track shouldn't be maintained any longer because it's already uh, cost us a lot of money. So we can we can always go ahead and, and access these reports. We can also schedule them. So if we need to see the asset, asset history report every single week, what we could do is just uh, create one more schedule here. Um, we could select maybe like we want this in PDF, right? And we want to schedule this uh, weekly, every Friday, uh, maybe, you know, uh, at this time. And I want to send it to different managers or different user groups, anyone that I want to choose in here. And these would literally send you that PDF uh, and you will have it in your inbox. No need to, to go over the system or to look for a particular uh, report or anything. Um, if I show you just a little bit about how the, the material section works, we're obviously going to be able to list all of our materials, inventory tools in here. And uh, we, can, we can do this by warehouse. We can create material transactions if we, if we want to. So instead of creating maybe like a new purchase, we would be able to transfer some material between warehouses. And the and a good thing about Beam is that since it has a workflow capability running underneath, we can create any type of workflow that we're interested in. So if, for example, I want to create a transaction, maybe my manager has to approve that, then the other warehouse receives that request and they prepare those uh, inventory items, maybe they schedule that transfer and the, the system is going to be able to, to tell you where you are right now in the process, whether it's a purchasing request, where you, whether it's a ticket that you just created. You're going to know who's responsible for the next step. And obviously, in, in this case, the, the personnel management module is going to be very interesting because without people um, entering here on Beam, how much time they spend on those maintenance operations or if they have actually received a request or if they are transferring some materials, we wouldn't be able to, to manage BIM um, uh, in its full capacity. 
And um, I can show you just uh, what are the things we can do, for example, for the purchasing management. We can create requests. We can access our um, offer or order list. We can start creating here all of our uh, list of offers that we receive from different vendors. And we can compare, uh, like, for example, maybe last time we ordered something from this particular vendor. And now they are offering uh, maybe like discount prices. Anything we want, everything is going to be recorded here on B. So we can we can access the system with many different uh, uh, many different users right but basically there are three different types of licenses so whether we are a, an admin user who has access to the complete system whether we are just like a maintenance team member and we have access to the maintenance part of it or whether we just create tickets um, all of us are going to belong to a certain group and everyone is going to have their own authorizations and access to the different modules if, if you want to learn more about Beam, uh, there are many videos available on YouTube. You can also contact us and we can, we can schedule a more detailed um, demo of it. But for now, I think um, that's, that's enough. And I'm going to go back to the presentation and just introduce Beam, I'm sorry, QDMS uh, very quickly. So in this case, um, just like with Beam, we're going to have many different modules to choose from. And since QDMS is a quality document management system, um, it's, it's only natural that the, the first module that you see on the top left is a document management uh, part, of, part of it. So we, we can comply with any standard. We can help you comply with any standard with, with a platform like QDMS. So basically everything you do in terms of quality can be stored in here in QDMS. So we can have customer complaints, we can have corrective and preventive actions, we can help you with your audit management activities. We can help you with your actions, with your surveys, with training, uh, with calibration, with risk management, anything, you name it. These are only um, some of the modules that are available in the system. We have, we have many more. And um, we, we don't make a difference in terms of the certification that uh, the clients are using in terms of you know, every, every client who's after our certification, they are probably going to be afraid of, of losing it. So, for example, the audit management capabilities is going to be the same for, for every single company who has a quality department um, who is either I, after an ISO certification or an SQF certification if you are uh, within the food industry. So we offer um, all of these modules and from, from Acumatica, for example, what we're doing is picking up information about um, HR, like for example, the personnel information, like the name, emails, departments, all of these, instead of entering everything on QDMS or uploading it, we can just simply pick it up from Acumatica. We can also pick up uh, your product groups, your products, anything, customers, suppliers, all of this information is already going to be available on QDMS. And, and by the way, um, both Beam and QDMS are certified uh, by Acumatica already. And we are also working on integrating EBA, the, the workflow and document management system. So just so that you can see a little bit of, of QDMS right now, I'm also going to be logging into a demo environment. And you'll see that um, these, these user that I'm going to be logging in with, um, this is just a regular end user. Again, it has access to a home screen in here. In this case, instead of showing us a dashboard like Beams, it shows us the tasks that we have to complete. So uh, Kevin here, for example, has uh, like one document that he saved. We have um, maybe to take care of a customer complaint. We have to fill out a couple of surveys, participate in a training, um, complete the root recent analysis. So there are always going to be tasks that are going to be um, popping up in here. And we're also going to be receiving notifications. We can get those notifications via email and also um, in our mobile applications. They are available for Android and iOS. Um, they, they can be uh, used either for Beam or for QDMS. Any of our products have a mobile application. And so um, here on the main menu, we have access to certain modules. These ones in particular are interesting uh, in terms of an ISO 9001 certification. So we can, we can store all of our procedures in here. We can access all of our documentation. We can, uh, for example, distribute all of our documents. We can uh, create um, distribution matrices or even approval matrices. So for example, if I upload a document, maybe the quality manager has to review it. Or you know, if we uh, review every single document every year, then we can um, create new versions 
of all of these documents within the system. We can also take care of customer complaints, whether they are internal or external. Um, these, these two modules are very similar. And for example, we can enter information about uh, what the request is about, like what the complaint is about. Maybe um, a certain company uh, received a damaged product or maybe um, it was uh, broken within uh, the transportation process. So we can make sure that every complaint that we receive is stored in here and that we can create a kappa or an action because of that complaint. So whether we want to, to go on uh, completing a root reason analysis, finding out what was the root cause of the problem, we can enter everything in here. We can assign teams to work on that. And since we're going to be receiving notifications, everyone is going to know what they have to do and they, they're going to have a certain time frame to complete those, those tasks. So everything is going to be managed here in one single system. Um, the customer complaints and the kappas, they are connected because, for example, if we open a customer complaint that requires a kappa, unless we close a kappa, we won't be able to close a customer complaint. So we can move back and forth uh, between these two modules. Um, we can, for example, create audit plans, uh, we can create action plans, we can create training plans. And if we have, for example, a plan for 2019, we can start adding different audits to it. We can uh, create action plans after, for example, a meeting. If we have a like, list of tasks that different employees have to complete, we can assign them here on QDMS and make sure that um, those tasks are completed on time. We also offer a management review module in here. This is very interesting because it allows us to see every activity that was due, um, you know, that is being delayed or something, there is something wrong. And we can access all of those in here, sort them by date and make sure that we complete the ones that are most uh, important right now. And we can also take a look at the ones that are planned for the future. So whether you know we want to search by module or by every module altogether, um, we can we can always ask, access these uh, these section. Um, another module that you see here, for example, is the survey one. Um, this is not common, but most of the companies are already submitting surveys. So why not include that functionality also here on QDMS and get uh, get reports from it? So if you are maybe uh, sending out a survey about uh, like customer satisfaction and you want to compare how you're doing uh, between 2018 and 2019, maybe you can uh, create a report that shows um, that, that score, you know, if you're doing better this year or, you know, if your process has helped you in terms of the customer satisfaction. And you also see here that we have the training plan. Again, we can create a training plan for the whole year. We can either... Uh, impose a training plan to our employees every time there is a new procedure. And we can also allow them to create new requests um, in case they want to, to be trained um, on a specific topic. And we also have an event notification uh, module here. We also have modules for risk management, uh, for suggestion management, for event notification, anything, anything that, uh, that you can think of in terms of quality. So, um, I think uh, we have been receiving a few questions so far uh, during the webinar. So we're going to be addressing right now. Um, so Kevin, if you want to moderate the, the Q&A, that would be perfect. Uh, so uh, the question was about BIM. Other than manufacturing, uh, what other industries can be used? BIM can be used in, uh, 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 and currently being used in um, uh, distribution industry, distribution uh, vertical, uh, as well as uh, facility management, energy management. Uh, uh, it's been used by um, uh, logistic companies, uh, any company that has any kind of uh, uh, assets uh, can be used with. Uh, so I will say distribution, uh, facility management, property management, um, are some of them, uh, logistic, logistic industry, some of them that I can share with you that we have also references with. Uh, let's see the other questions that we have. Is there a maintenance schedule calendar for machines and service technicians? Uh, I believe it here uh, shared with, with you, uh, there is a, a schedule calendar uh, for uh, machines and uh, service technicians. Um, also, please keep in mind that if there is any, um, there is any uh, production a calendar, a schedule, a beam also can be 
uh, integrated with that. And so that you can see on one calendar, uh, the production schedule as well as the maintenance schedule together to manage the maintenance uh, and manufacturing operations together. If the client is not running Acumetica manufacturing edition, what Acumetica modules are required? Well, uh, first of all, uh, all of our products, same thing with QDMS and Beam, uh, they can work uh, independently, uh, standalone. Uh, as for the Acumetica, just to address this question, uh, the finance module will be, uh, will be enough. Uh, for the uh, for the uh, core basic integration with Acumetica. Uh, let's see, does uh, QDMS have a customer portal for B2P where end customers can submit complaints? Well, the, what happens is uh, uh, QDMS is actually web-based, so uh, naturally you can uh, access QDMS from anywhere, but what can be done is that the with the username and a password, uh, easily uh, client can uh, enter uh, their complaints into QDMS. So that can be done with the permissions and the usernames, basically. So that is possible on B2B, B2B basis. Let's see any other uh, questions that I can uh, address. I see these questions. I, there is another uh, question that I see. I think that's for ETR. Uh, as for the mobile apps, is there a mobile app available? Uh, for Beam as well as QDMS, that if we like to use it for, uh, we like to use it on the on the field. Every product that we have, uh, whether it is Ensemble, Eva, uh, QDMS, or Beam, they all have mobile applications that are available on uh, Google Play and the Apple Store. So you can easily download them, and you can log in with your with your users. And depending on your authorizations, you'll be able to to see different. Uh, sections of the product, but if if the the company or the client does not have uh, like a tablet or a phone, you can always connect to our products via a, a web browser. That's that's always an option. Okay, great. I think it looks like we address uh, uh, all the questions. Um, well, as for uh, let's see, uh, yes, uh, as for the um, uh, pricing, uh, pricing is uh, available. We have a. a standard prices that I can definitely share with you. Just if you can just send me an email, my email address is on the screen at the moment. So uh, I can email you the pricing and we can definitely talk further. Um, let's see. Um, well, uh, it looks like we have all the questions. Uh, uh, John, would you like to add anything before we end our session? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. I think that, um, you know, as I mentioned, I think we're, we're pretty excited to add this uh, into the manufacturing suite. I know it runs in other suites, but I'm more you know, preferential to the manufacturing suite. But no, I, I, we're very excited to, to, about this partnership with you guys. Thank you, John. I mean, uh, much appreciated. We are also very excited with, uh, with the partnership with Acumetica Manufacturing Edition, as well as Acumetica itself. And uh, we uh, look forward to uh, seeing everyone uh, at Acumetica Summit uh, in Houston. And I'd like to thank you, John, for your uh, participation, for your insights. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you, ETR, for the demonstration. And I'd like to thank our audience uh, for their interest. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Houston at Acumetica Summit. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.